Tonight's concert was recorded in October 2020 at Wren Music's building, Ebenezer Hall in Oakhampton. This was in front of a physically distant audience of Wren musicians and office staff under the guidance in force at the time. Ebenezer Hall is a converted chapel. It provides Wren with offices and rehearsal space and it's not a performance venue. So please be aware that occasionally you may hear the floorboards creak. We hope that this does not interrupt your enjoyment of the music. Please note that there is a three minute comfort break included after Rosa Rebecca set at about an hour into the running time. Just sit back and enjoy. Hello and welcome to the concert as part of Wren Music Folk Festival 2020. And to start things off, we're going to have an overture from the Wren online community with their version of the Cutty Wren, which they made in their own homes, individually singing along with each other's recordings. So I hope you enjoy that. Oh. 
the spare rib said Milda to Mulda. We may not tell you, said Festal to Ball. concert that was the cutty wren if you were part of the cutty wren uh, crew and you'd like to leave us some feedback just leave some comments below uh, this concert as part of everything we've been doing today as part of the wren music folk festival 2020 is absolutely free of charge but we would welcome your donations so do look for the link to see how you can make a donation to help wrens work with folk music and now to the main part of our concert. Um, it's great, great pleasure for me to introduce our first artist. We've been having a little chat about what is tradition. And so we've decided that we're going to say that Jim Causley sings old and new songs from the tradition. And he sometimes does a little bit of poetry as well. Um, so without further ado, welcome back, because he was with us last year, to Jim Causley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you, Marilyn, for that marvellous introduction. <laughs> I thought I'd start with a song from Baring Gould at the Baring Gould Festival. And uh, this is a, a song that I actually first found uh, in Baring Gould's book, Devonshire Characters and Strange Events. And uh, he mentions Wimple and the Wimple Wassail, which is the village I grew up in, because uh, that's a strange event. And, uh, and he also puts a little song in there. And called Old Uncle Whiteway and it's all about the making of cider and uh, in the book Baron Gould tells a little tale about how some of his vicar friends were sent to the vicarage at Wimpole to stay for six weeks cider cure. I'm not exactly sure what that involved but uh, apparently it cured all ales. So there you are. Right so this is Old Uncle Whiteway. <laughs> Not far from the sea Still lives my old uncle Aged eighty and three Of orchards and meadows He owns a good lot Such cider as his Not another as got So fill up the jug boys Let it go round Of drinks none the equal In England is found So pass the jug round me boys But let it free There's nothing like cider Sweet cider for me And his sparkling eye His head snowy white as the flower in May And he drinks only cider by night and by day So fill up the jug boys Let it go round Of drinks none the equal in England is found So pass the jug round me boys But let it free There's nothing like cider Sweet cider for me trees lean and ripen their burdens red golden and green in autumn the apples among the graves lie there i'll sleep well says uncle when fated to die and fill up the jug boys let it go round of drinks none the equal in england is found so pass the jug round me boys but let it free there's nothing like cider sweet cider for me sound juicy as been my limbs and my trunk have been sturdy and clean uncankered i've thrived in heart and in head so we 
it's under them apple trees lay me when I'm dead. And fill up the jug, boys, let it go round. Our drinks none equal in England is found. So pass the jug round, me boys, but let it free. There's nothing like cider. Do another Baron Gould collector song now. It's a bit of a theme going on here, uh, and this is one that takes place on Dartmoor, just behind us here. And it's about an old legend about a chap who, in medieval times, goes out hunting on his horse. And uh, as often happens on Dartmoor, the weather comes down, and much hilarity ensues. <laughs> I won't give the whole tale away, but. Um, but one thing I've noticed in Devon folk songs is that horses often don't fare very well. Um, there's Widdicombe Fair, of course, poor horse gets overladen with passengers, and Ask of Tech got the poor horse goes off the edge of the cliff, and then there's this one. So this is Child the Hunter, about a chap called Child, not a child. <laughs> Come listen all, both great and small, a tale I will you tell, that on this bleak and barren moor, in ancient times befell. It so befell, as I've heard tell, there came the hunter child, all day he chased, on heath and waste, on dirty moor, so The winds did blow, then came the snow, he chased on fox or mud. He lost his way, and so the day and winter sun expired. In darkness climbed, he could not find where his escape might gain. Long time he tried, no track espied, his labours all in vain. No shelter there upon the moor that long night to remain. With sword in hand, this desperate man his own loyal steed has slain. He's plunged his sword deep in her breast, parted flesh and skin. And in the body of his good grey mare, the hunter child lay And there with fingers dipped in blood he wrote upon the stones, This is my will, God, it fulfill, that buried be my bones. And froze together they did lay, till springtime did come around. The will he left on fox or mire, all upon the rocks to be found. I'd like to do a song now, uh, written, uh, it's about a sort of older topic, but written much more recently by a good friend of ours called Martin Graver. And uh, it's called Honiton Lace, and it's all about the industry of lace making in around East Devon and Honiton and Axminster way. And uh, Martin was, whilst he was living and working in Devon, he was in the museum at Exeter, I think in the 70s, and he came across some old copies of the Western Morning News, one of our local rags still. And uh, in these copies of the paper, 
They'd asked local women to write in about their day-to-day -day lives and they published them like a diary. And Martin found a piece from a Honiton lace worker and she had written in all about her day-to-day -day life. And he was so taken with what she wrote that he took her words and turned them into a song. Uh, obviously he's had to change them a little bit to make them rhyme and such, but uh, what I love about this song is it is essentially the words of a real life lady. And uh, in my ignorance, I imagine lace making was a very sort of lovely, genteel kind of period drama type of thing to do. <laughs> but it, I was very wrong. It's very tough, gruelling work, not very well paid. And these women and men that worked at Honneth and Lace often ended up with terrible hunchbacks because they would spend all day trying to get the best light they could. But anyway, the song tells it all. And it's simply called Honneth and Lace. My name is Becky Tidwell, and I'm past twice thirty years. I crave a little of your time to tell of me hopes and fears. I am a single lady, and I think it no disgrace, for my life's been spent in honest toil, work in the Honiton Lace. A cottage near to Axminster is the place that I call home. My father left it to me, and it's the one thing that I own. I rise each morning at the dawn, when the sun first shows his face. For that is when the light is best, for work in the Honiton lays. At nine o'clock I go down to the shop and I take my work. My friends are gathered there and we can spend some time in talk. We get paid off in tokens we can use just in that place. For their value is but five pence for a day at the Honiton Lays. Then Mr Groves he gives to me a pattern for to do. Sometimes there is a harder piece that must be done by two. So me and Bridget Harvey, we sit in a window case and we spend a pleasant day at chatting and work in the Honiton Lace. Now once there was a young man who spoke kindly unto me, but he became a soldier and he was lost in the crime He was me only suitor, and no one has took his place. And so never for myself I'll work a veil of the Honiton lace. But sometimes when the night draws on, I'll let me bobbins fall, and I'll think the piece I'm working on some lady at a ball. So all you London ladies whose fine clothes are work disgrace, just you think honest Devonshire women who dressed you in your fine Honiton lace. Honiton lace. Of course, because of the old COVID, quite a lot of uh, traditional events and uh, customs and things have sadly been cancelled this year. Uh, a lot of things that uh, haven't not happened for many, many, many years, uh, including Widdicombe Fair, Tavistock Goosey Fair, and mm. uh, another one is Bampton Fair, that's what be happening this month. And Bampton Fair always happened on the last Thursday in October. And uh, it's got quite a fascinating history because there was once two fairs in Bampton, and uh, but this later one is the one that obviously survived the longest. The other one died, and then they had the uh, after the fair where musicians and singers would all get together and have a good old knees up, which sort of recreated the fair of old, as it were. And this next song I learnt from the singing of a wonderful old Exmoor singer called Margaret Palmer, and Margaret was from the Brendan Valley where she grew up and uh, lived with her father. And they would make the journey every year to Bampton Fair, across the moors. And uh, this is a song she sang. I think sometimes she said her father wrote it. I'm not quite sure about that. But, um, but it's a lovely sort of uh, description of the fair, of how it was. So this is Bampton Fair. <clears throat> 
When I was a young mate, my daddy said to me, Daughter, come along to the horse fair with me. Up in the morning, away we will go, and we'll take the long road to the fair at Bampton Hall. We started off at daybreak in the cold October air. Well, we saw the travelling people all going to the fair. And as we come to Witheridge, we hadn't far to go To reach the town of Tiverton that made history long ago And as we come along to the outskirts of the fair We then went down to Brook Street and to the Market Square And then we... Excuse me. <coughs> oh there. Tis there we saw... I nearly forgot the most important part. Tis there we saw the horse dealers busy at their trade. Then horses by the hundred, by every human shade. There was grass, horses race, horses cobs and hunters do. And little legs, small ponies, of them there's quite a few. We heard a ballad singer singing songs of long ago. Everyone was gathered for the fair of Bampton home. To the town we saw the famous ring Twas here they were performing The crowning of the king We heard him making speeches And he seemed so very proud As he jumped upon the platform At the cheering of the crowd But times has changed a bit today A new system now exists They voted by the ballad Instead of by the fist They fathom they would practice In the days of long ago To fight the hold in battle For the king of battle and ho. There was grass, horses, race, horses, cobs, and hunters too. And little legs, small ponies, of them there's quite a few. We heard a ballad singer singing songs of long ago. Everyone was gathered for the fair of Bampton Ho. And then to Maggie Mays we went for a jar or two of cider. We heard the music playing and the dancing getting wilder. The women in their homemade shawls, the men in hobnail boots. The atmosphere was jolly with their fiddles and their flutes. And then my father says to me it had enough to drink. So up into the horse and cart we hit the midnight trip. We started off along the road with a fair old ways to go. I never shall forget about the fair at Bampton Hall. There was grass, horses, race, horses, cobs, and hunters do. And little legs, small ponies, and then there's quite a few. We heard a ballad singer singing songs of long ago. Everyone was gathered for the fair at Bampton song mentioned travellers uh, I'd like to sing you a song uh, from one of the wonderful traveller families that we have here in Devon who are great upholders of traditional song and dance and playing and this is one from Amy Birch uh, who lived up at Exbridge uh, on the edge of uh, Exmoor. Uh, Amy's 89 only this month as well still going strong singing strong as well and uh, this is one, you can hear us singing this and several other songs on the Voice of the People collection that Topic Records put out. And this song has been collected all over the British Isles in various different versions, but this is Amy's version and she calls it Royal Comrade. Turn back again, but before. 
before they were turned back, they would die on the So they went on together till they came to a lake. Young Leonard took off his clothes and began for to swim. Six times round the island, six times he swam round. He said, it's deep and fast water and I'm swimming quite long. He said, Royal Comrade, Royal Comrade, don't you venture in, for it's deep and fast water, and young Leonard was drowned. Well, early the next morning, his sister she rose straight to her mother's chamber straight to her she goes saying mother dear mother i have had a strange dream that my poor brother's drowned in the lake at marsh green and early that same morning mother she rose she had rings on every finger and a heart full of woe she said was there anyone stood near him was there anyone stood nigh who could have ventured their life If you went to his funeral, you'd have seen a grand sight. There was four and twenty young girls, all dressed in milk white. They picked him up and they carried him, laid him in a bed of cold clay. They bid adieu to young Leonard. And they all walked away. edit in post can't we <laughs> <laughs> all right um i'd like to do a song what i wrote myself now and uh, this is a song uh, i wrote for a project that i was involved in, in with a chap you might know called bill murray or william murray um not the one from ghostbusters but the, the conco <laughs> competition chap bill and uh, <laughs> dartmoor bill um <laughs> And we're involved in this project by a, a local artist called Simon Pope, and it's all about celebrating the tin mining industry of Dartmoor and, uh, and looking at uh, the evolution of mining and similar industries uh, is going and what might happen with it in the future and <coughs> whether it might be uh, reignited. And uh, so I was asked to write a song about it, and there have been quite a few songs written about tin already, as some of you may well know. And uh, quite especially in our, our cousins in Cornwall, they've got lots of lovely songs about tin and the, the whole mining industry. And so I wanted to try and cover some, something a bit different. And so I've written this one from the point of view of the tin. And uh, this is novel. Because uh, I come from a wassailing part of the county where we sing to the trees and that's considered normal, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if we sang to the tin and asked its permission before we beat the living daylights out of it? So uh, the. Um, the verses are from the point of view of the tin and the chorus is from the point of view of the humans 
and the chorus goes Pride of the moor, we sing unto thee, in thanks for the treasure you've given so free. And should we have need to come find you again, we'll call and we'll listen for the cry of the tin. Got that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the cry of the tin, by the way, that's an old phrase and that uh, refers to the fact that tin is the only metal where if you bend it, it actually makes a noise, it makes a little crackly squeak, and that is known as the cry of tin. So that's what that's all about. And there's a, a few other big words in the song uh, you might want to look out for. Uh, Cassiterite is the biggest word. And that is tin ore. That's the black lumpy stuff you get in granite before you smash it and smelt it, get the tin out. So I was very proud of myself to get that word in a song. <laughs> uh, Stanum is the Latin word for tin. 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 Very good. <laughs> Where we get the word stannery from, which is to do with tin. Yeah. Nothing to do with bread. That's granary. <laughs> um, I think that's all you need to know. So this is Pride of the Moor. <laughs> When first you found me as dark as the night, bound up in granite cold cassiterite, with quartz and with copper, with iron and lead, my brothers all round me lay dormant, not dead. Well, the streams of the moor where first I was found Before wheels uncovered my load underground A fiery dragon lights up the night sky As a willow the wisp tells their stunning hard by Pride of the moor will sing unto thee In thanks for the treasure you've given so free but Should we have need to come find you again We'll call and we'll listen for the cry of the tin. From black tin to white tin to ingot I be, enslaved into form, but from earth I am free. The twelve hour tide takes my tailings from me. I'm a traveller bound on the road to the sea. Well, the first town was Tavistock, the Stanneries came, then to Chackford, Ashburton, and Plimpton the same. Midsummer to Michaelmas, the coinage time came, as saying if I was as pure as my name. Pride of the all will sing unto thee, in thanks for the treasure you've given so free. Should we have need to come find you again? We'll call and we'll listen for the cry of the tin. For millions of years lying under the land, anticipating the coming of man. With fire and stone tools and barrow and hoard, I became your fine jewellery, your shield, your sword. Your bowl, your tankard, galvanised door, and now used to solder as I did once before. Of all forms I've taken without word, without choice. Like the church bells of Dartmoor that sing with my voice. Pride of the all will sing unto thee, in thanks for the treasure you've given so free. Should we have need to come find you again, we'll call and we'll listen for the cry of the tin. Pride of the all we'll sing unto thee, in thanks for the treasure you've given so free. And should we have need to come find you again, we'll call and we'll listen. For the cry of the tea. Thank you very much, Jim. And just to remind you that. Everything we've done today is free, but you can make a donation. Look for the link. <laughs> Thank you to Jim 
for that fabulous first set and now it's my great great pleasure to introduce to you Rosa Rebecca before that are you having I hope you've had a fabulous day here at uh, the Wren Music Folk Festival online 2020 you will never forget that it was online 2020 will you? you're going to remember that forever um, Rosa Rebecca one of the uh, community musicians here at Wren Rebecca is a singer songwriter and she sings Swedish songs. She's Swedish American, but now firmly located here in Devon. She's responsible for introducing lots of Swedish songs to Wren groups. Uh, and Becca writes her own songs. She's going to be singing a set of her own songs. She sings Swedish songs. And when the mood takes her, she's even been known to sing English folk songs. So uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome to the Wren Music Folk Festival, Rosa Rebecca. <laughs> So that one is a Swedish one. Um, the melody is a bit older than the words. The words talk about Värmland, this province in Sweden, and how incomparably beautiful it is. I've never been, and I shall ever love this song, not necessarily for the details of the lyrics, but because of the longing that I think is innate in that melody. Now, I'd like to follow that with, uh, with one of my own. I am finding at the moment an alarming amount of anger, uh, including in my own skin whenever I read the newspapers in the morning, uh, which, which feels problematic. And uh, basically, I think anger is a very valid feeling and uh, can be a real uh, driving force for change. But ultimately, I think the, the emotion that will come to the rescue of humanity isn't anger, it's, uh, it's radical compassion. And that's where this song comes from. Cause count for classroom, the teacher says one, two, and three. And some of the children follow, some of them fail to see. A lonesome is just a number, and pain is a point of view. This world has a million stories, every one of them true. Across some distant border, the sky has a jagged scar. In most parks, no bombs are falling, over a few they are. Most of the parts are peaceful, and most of the people would fight. But this world has a million stories, only one of them mine. Shattered, and others are less than blue. 
is not one that never mattered It's part of the pattern too And for some the world is a safe place And for some it's a raging sea This world has a million stories Sometimes that's hard to see Out exactly when I wrote them and why. This next song I wrote, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much exactly four and a half years ago, and I wrote it for the small creature that uh, lived in my womb, and at that point I knew only as the mighty Squiggle. <laughs> now, Squiggle has since emerged and introduced herself as being the even more mighty, uh, loving, and funny Ronya. Um, but I'd like to dedicate this. To anybody who's experienced a pregnancy, whether being pregnant themselves or being inside somebody who is pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> songs like this one that can be a little bit challenging I will either be very impressive at this point or I will be buggered but one or the other <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to say that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
downpours, the dying of spring, weep out your weary eyes, but then shall we sing, then shall we sing, and then shall we sing for the next one, I'm going to go all Swedish traditional on you again. Om alla berg och backar. Now this is a polska, uh, so if you're a muso, then think of it as in three with the emphasis of one and three. If that didn't mean anything for you, then just think of it as a heartbeat like this. Now I'm going to do this for you in English and then I'm going to do, no, I'm going to do it for you in Swedish first and then in English. And if you want to, you know, really give me a nice strong beat, for the English part, that'd be no. For the Swedish part, that would be great. <laughs> God, I'm getting mixed up. What language am I speaking? Which is probably the Eskimo that I know. Yeah, I'm just for that. Clap along to the Swedish. Tap along quietly for the English if you want to catch the words as well. Now Sweden has got this uh, huge, rich tradition of these beautiful, deeply heartfelt love songs. And then it's got songs like this. So let's do it. I take no responsibility for the lyrics. I translated them, but uh, that's as far as I got. Om alla berg och backar bor och står brä och alla sjöar bor och bränd vin. Om alla berg och backar bor och står brä och alla sjöar bor och bränd vin. Och alla vackra gossar står i en bra och jag har ting i gå och välja. Alla vackra gossar står i en bra och jag har ting i gå och välja. Jag valde väl en, jag valde för att få mig när han skulle bli den rätta. Jag valde väl en, jag valde för att få mig när han skulle bli den rätta. Och en skulle vara min utvalda den och en skulle få mig. Jag skulle vara min utvalda den och jag skulle få mitt hjärta Och hi och ho, hepp och härm och hisepp på hjärtat skuttade en hare Och hi och ho, hepp och härm och hisepp på hjärtat skuttade en hare Alla vackra gossar skulle jag kyssa men det fula skulle jag låta vara Alla vackra gossar skulle jag kyssa men det fula skulle jag låta vara Så det är engelsk if all the hills and mountains turned to bread and cheese and all the lakes were filled with whiskey. If all the hills and mountains turned to bread and cheese and all the lakes were filled with whiskey. And all pretty boys just stood under 
and roll when I could choose whoever pleased me. Oh, pretty boys just stood in a row and I could choose whoever pleased me. I would choose one and I would choose two, but one would be the one and only. I would choose one and I would choose two, but one would be the one and only. And one he would have my heart and my soul, and one would keep me when I'm lonely. One he would have my heart and my soul, and one would keep me when I'm lonely. And he and high and ho and father little though a hair skipped over stick and stone. And he and hay and ho and father little though a hair skipped over stick and stone. Oh how I'd kiss each pretty boy inside the ugly ones I'd leave alone. Oh how I'd kiss each pretty boy inside the ugly ones I'd leave alone. <laughs> Is dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, next, I should like to, uh, oh, I'd like to take you to Jonah's song. Right, so this is one uh, where I so sometimes get the question, what, what am I on about? What is it about? And I sort of want to answer that, well, if I could sum that up in words, I wouldn't need to write the song, now would I? <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's a life story song. It was sparked and inspired, although it not, not, does not in any exact way follow the, the death of my one of my great uncles uh, who hailed from Dunsa, a small island off the Gothenburg archipelago, uh, a place of great natural beauty and heavy and deeply felt religiosity. <laughs> It's hard. 
hard to be free. Oh, but oh, it's so good to be free. Thank you. You know those those heartfelt Swedish. Uh, love songs that you did not get an example of. I, I figured I'd, I'd do you one of them as well. Uh, now this one translates roughly as the beautiful cross the crystal. The beautiful crystal might shine like the sun, like the stars shimmer in the sky. I know a girl in the in the village. My dear, my dear and beloved flower, oh if we could get together and I were your dearest and your, you were my dearest. You noble rose in a golden case. If I were to get to the edge of the world, my heart would still cry out to you. Not even at a 
it's cold But did you know that your voice is a lantern And I know the dark from the full There are nights when the stars are not shining And when the dawn is a dawn no Did you know that your voice is a lantern? And I know the dark from the I got one more song for you, so uh, thank you so much for listening and, and clapping and singing and all of the good stuff. Uh, this is one that I quite like wrapping up with, and it seems more important forever, uh, more important than ever. I would like to uh, just end on a uh, song in praise of gentleness. <laughs> Since you gave to me your smiles, my dears, all the sorrow really disappears. It is no longer my master. It can find me, but it cannot find me. It can take me, but it cannot break me. It can hold me, but it can't enfold me. Yields to the strength of your smiles Strong and steady through the quake steers Taking as long time as it takes steers The soft stream still carves the rock It yields to the power of gentleness Storms will ever rip up trees, my dears, but the slow power of the seeds and tears still wraps up the world in new forests. Tyrants fists could never grasp it, and short-term investors deem it fruitless, and the anger bound cannot see its purpose. It lacks any power to shock. But make no naive mistakes, dears. The sword only holds until it breaks, dears. The soft stream still carves the rock. And the conqueror, the cocoon in the water carved mountain, the light of the moon in the nurturing fountain. Time that heals wounds and lets bruises recover. Breath of a child and the touch of a lover. All echoed power of drinking while we get the next act on. Thank you very much.
It's with great pleasure now I introduce to the stage Mr Paul Sartin. Now we've just been reminiscing about when I first met Paul and it was back in 1998, in the last century, last millennium that we met uh, when Paul and I were making The Dead Maid's Land, our first adventures into the Bearing Gold archive. Um, Paul's been really supportive of our online community this year and our orchestra has been playing his tunes very happily. So big hand please for those of you in the room and those of you at home, big hand for Paul Sartin. Thanks very much Marilyn, it's lovely to be back here in Devon. I've uh, crossed three counties to get here today, <laughs> so I thought I ought to bring you um, a little tribute from my home in Hampshire. This is a traditional song that was collected a quarter of a mile down the road from where I live in the beautiful and sophisticated Hampshire town of Whitchurch. And it's a song uh, of which you might recognise the words because they're pretty well known. There's, there's a sort of common or garden version of this. Um, but it's the Wild Rover. Uh, most people think that's Irish because the Dubliners covered it, but it's actually from uh, East Anglia. It's arguably East Anglia's principal cultural export. Um, but this version is the superior one because it's from Whitchurch. It was collected in 1907 by George Gardner from a chap called Henry Lee. And please do join in with the chorus, but probably not until you've listened to it at least once because it's maybe not quite what you expect. <clears throat> I've been a wild rover for many a long year. I've spent all my money, boys, on fine gals and strong beer. But for my part, I'll lay up my money in store. And it's never will I play the wild rover no more. Wild rover. Wild rover. Wild Rover no more And it's never will I play the Wild Rover no more So I went to an alehouse where I used to resort The liquor was good but my money ran short I asked them to trust me But their answer was nay such a customer as you, my boy, we may have any day. Wild Rover, Wild Rover, Wild Rover no more. And it's never will I play the Wild Rover no more. I pulled out my handfuls of money straightway. It was only to try them to hear what they'd say. Kind sir, you are welcome to liquor of the best. What I said to you before, kind sir, was only in jest. Wild Rover, Wild Rover. Wild Rover no more And it's never will I play the Wild Rover no more Oh no, I replied, that never can be I'll see you all hanged if I spend one penny For a man that's got money may sing and may roar but a man that's got none must be turned out of doors. Wild Rover, Wild Rover, Wild Rover no more. And it's never will I play the Wild Rover no more. Landlady at ease in her chair With ruffles round her wrists And fine curls in her hair It's got by our money, boys That you very well know 
and to maintain her we are fools if we do what rover what rover why are And it's never will I play the Wild Rover no more. Let's see, uh, the Whitchurch Wild Rover. Whitchurch, when I, even when I first moved there about 15 years ago, was renowned in Hampshire as being a, a bit of a party town which didn't influence my decision to move there at all. But <laughs> since then, due to various factors, things have um, quietened down a little bit, but I'm still trying to regenerate Whitchurch's party atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a song about the perils of drinking in Whitchurch. Um, about three or four years ago, um, a group of us, uh, including the Young'uns and Faustus, decided to... Uh, revised Peter Bellamy's stunning classic folk opera, The Transports. We'd already done some work on it a few years prior to that with members of Bellowhead, but we put a proper tour together two or three years ago, and um, I got the role of the father who opened uh, the whole show by singing about the poverty faced by agricultural workers in 19th century rural England. Um, in this case, I think the protagonists were in Essex, but that sort of poverty can be found from Essex right through Sussex, Hampshire, Dorset, Somerset, Devon, Wiltshire, Gloucestershire. They were the, the pro poorest counties in the country in the 19th century. Uh, how things have changed since then. Um, so this is the father singing his song, um, and it's called Us Poor Fellows by Peter Bellamy. Oh, the times they are hard. And the wages are poor None of us poor fellows Has money in store So who can a good man Keep the wolf from the door Poor fellows We all will go down When work it is scarce Tell me how can we eat How can we afford to buy shoes for our feet and how can we get clothing to keep off the sleet poor fellows we might as well drown if we could find labour we never would complain we'd work well for our master his favour to gain we'd be honest and faithful with never a stain but poor fellows how we'll be survive we could plough the good land we could fish the salt sea we could work in the woodlands felling of the trees but when only the breath of to see his wife cry, poor fellow, 
And a man that is desperate and can't find a job, he will not be contented to sit home and sob. Be he ever so honest, he'll turn out and Fellows from uh, the transports, which is a ballad opera about the first transport of convicts to Australia, and that sets the background for how at least one of the convicts and shows what dire straits were people in, uh, people were in at that time. Uh, I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit now. Um, oh, by the way, there's a link between Devon and the transports, which is that um, there's a whole song about sort of the hero of the story who rescues a baby. And he's the, the driver of the Plymouth Mail. So that's the Devon connection with that. But we're going to skip back over to East Anglia now, I'm afraid. So this is a traditional love song from East Anglia. And the more educated amongst you will know that this is actually the only traditional love song from East Anglia. That's the only traditional love song from East Anglia to involve members of two uh, separate families. <laughs> Be careful what I say down here actually. <laughs> the nervous laugh in the audience there. <laughs> A charming creature Who she is I do not know But I'll court her for her beauty Until she do say yes or no Oh darling, I have come for to court you If your favour I may gain And if you will entertain me Perhaps I may come this way again Oh darling, I have rings and jewels Darling, I have a house and land Darling, I have a wealth of treasure All this shall be in your command and land. What care I for your wealth or treasure? 
All I want is a handsome man. Or first come cowslips and then come daisies. First comes night and then comes day. First comes the old love and then the new one. And so we pass our time away. Rotten. The hottest love is the soonest cold. Lovers' vows are soon forgotten. So I pray, young man, be not so bold. Sexes begins. Um, if, you, if you think that was bad enough, here's a song I, some of you might be familiar with called My Husband's Got No Courage in Him. Um, <laughs> this is a song sung by a man who's overhearing a woman relating it. So it's quite confusing gender wise, anyway. And what compounds that is the fact that this was collected in Dorset by the Hammer Brothers from a chap whose first name was Jesse in 1907 so it's all a bit weird but um it's got a chorus my um oh dear oh oh dear oh my husband's got no courage in him oh dear oh i'm sure you can manage that even here down in devon so uh, please do join in <coughs> as i walked out one may morning to view the fields and leaves are springing I saw a maiden standing by and one of them her hands was ringing oh dear oh what shall I do my husband's got no courage in him oh All sorts of victuals I provide, all sorts of things that's fitting for him. With oyster pie and rhubarb too, but nothing will put courage in him. Oh dear, oh, what shall I do? My husband's got no courage in him. My husband's praise where'er he goes and everyone looks well upon him with his handsome foot and his well-shaped leg but nothing will put courage in him oh dear oh what shall i do my husband's got no courage in him husband he can dance and sing do anything that's fitting for him but he can't do the thing I want because he's got no courage in him oh dear oh what shall I do my husband 
husband's got no courage in him. Oh dear, oh. I wish my husband he was dead, and in the grave I'd quickly lay him. Then I would find some other one that's got some little courage in him. Oh dear, oh, what shall I do? My husband's got no courage in him. Supermodel, uh, Jim Lattles, <laughs> over there. Uh, so, uh, my husband's got no courage in him, collected in 1906 or thereabouts from Jesse Steer in Dorset. And actually, we're going to stay in Dorset now because um, I'm very fortunate to have about uh, a family collection of around 125 or so traditional songs, collected in 1906 and 1907 by Robert and Henry Hammond. And they collected these songs from some of my great aunts. Uh, the most famous of which is Marina Russell, whose main name was Sartin, and she's a very direct ancestor of mine. Um, and there's Mary Ann Bartlett, and then there's Edith Sartin, who married into the family, and she lived in the village of Corscombe in Dorset. Um, and she sang 11 songs and song fragments to the Hammer Brothers, as she couldn't remember sort of full text of all of her songs. Although the one I'm going to do now, she did remember the whole thing, all four verses. And this is a, well, it sort of follows on quite nicely from the previous song. Um, although seemingly it's a sort of retort of men against women, I still think that in the end of it, the man comes off worse. Things, whatever thus. So um, this is called a very uh, simple chorus with me fol de roll de rido, fol de roll de ray, or de lay or something. Make it up, I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come all you young men that are going for to wed, don't be caught like a bird with a little piece of bread. For when you are caught, remember tis for life. So I'd have you be careful in choosing of a wife. With my father all that I do. Father of the lay. Oh, women are deceitful and very unkind. Twould puzzle a lawyer to know their right and mind. And when you have done the best that you can, the silliest woman will outdo a man. With my father of the rider. Father of the lay. So when I get home all tired from my work, then my wife she lets fly with a quirk. Take the young scolding brat and put him to sleep. For all this long day, no rest could I get. With my father of the rider. Father of the lay. And if that offer I should chance to refuse, with the tongues and the poker, she will me abuse. And if that is the comfort of a married life, I wish to my heart I'd never had a wife. With my father of the rider, father of the lay. With my father of the rider, father of the lay. So great, 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 great. Aunt Edith Spurden, I'll be careful in choosing a wife. Set to, uh, I think, a uh, fairly stock common tune. I think it's used for songs about Dick Turpin and all sorts of things. Mm. 
I'm talking of tunes. John Dyer and I had a wonderful morning today. Running a, an online workshop for all sorts of instruments. Most of which could stay in tune. It's all part of the act, by the way. And the tune we used this morning um, goes under the very snappy title of the Oxford University. It's so snappy, I can't even say it. Oxford University Voluntary Quick Step. <laughs> Got that? Um, I'm not going to say it again because uh, <laughs> I can't. Uh, so, this comes from a, a manuscript uh, dated back to 1817. And this manuscript was compiled uh, by a, a chap who we think was in his early teens by the name of Richard Pyle. And we think that he was being uh, tutored by a travelling sort of um, dancing master or teacher who taught him. The tunes of the day. So in 1817, uh, um, you find a lot of waltzes, a lot of quick steps, lots of tunes named after battles because they're sort of post Napoleonic era. Um, and Richard Parle was of the sort of minor landed gentry, so it wasn't sort of uh, really sort of uh, down to earth folk music as such. It's maybe sort of a level more arty than that. Um, and he lived in the uh, Hampshire village of Nether Wallop, which is uh, a name of a place and not a compound verb. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, his manuscript ended up in the records library in Winchester, where we plundered it for tunes and bought a book out quite a few years ago of all the, of the, sort of the finest selection of Pyle's tunes. Um, this, uh, this tune, Oxford University Voluntary Quickstep, there I said that again, um, was written by a chap called Joseph Reinigal, who's sort of not at all well known, but he was a contemporary of Haydn. And he obviously wrote this tune for some sort of militia in Oxford, and in Pyle's manuscript, um, it's actually written out in two parts, which was very common for quick steps. But um, there's no, that's the only version of it, we've never seen a printed corollary of this tune. Um, and this nearly didn't make it into the collection because I, my co-editor of the book, took one look at it and thought this is rubbish and I'm still trying to work out whether he's right or not but um, <laughs> I quite like it because it's quite easy to play <laughs> although some of you who were there this morning might not agree with that uh, so the Pyle, Richard Pyle lived in Pyle's farm Pyle's farm in Nether Wallop and then I've seen the letter that, attesting to this but in the 1960s the then owners because it had, the family uh, the Pyle family had moved away by then the then owners uh, renamed the cottage from a pile farm or pile house because, and I quote, it was redolent, redolent of vulgarity and hemorrhoids. <laughs> and just you know, to add to this really, um, so Richard Pyle manuscript from Nether Wallop, which my co-editor, um, lovely chap, goes under the name of Bob Shatwell. So <laughs> this is after the watershed, you did so, didn't you? <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's the second tune, the Oxford tune. Um, I've told you the name already. The first tune I'm going to play is one that was very popular in Sussex and Hampshire in the southern counties, and it's called Captain White or Captain Wyke. Please feel free to uh, dance along at home. <laughs>
uh, stay in Hampshire now, but, uh, but with a, a piece that's a bit more modern. So the, the, um, the words for this song were written in 1917 by a poet called Sizely Fox Smith, who is not as well known as she should be, but her reputation is being sort of uh, resuscitated, um, or has been over the last uh, few years. And Sizely wrote this poem in 1916 while she was living in the uh, village of Gibraltar, which is um, a very, uh, it's next door to the village of Wawa, which is where my family live, um, in the Test Valley part of Hampshire. Now, in 1916, Sizely's poem was published a couple of times in magazines, and then it disappeared without trace, until what I think must have been the probably the late 70s, early 80s, when the poem resurfaced in a magazine something like the people's friend and it was picked up by our late friend sarah morgan who i'm sure many of you fondly remember also a resident of the test valley and she set sizely's words to music um, and since then it's become a bit of a sort of folk club favorite i think i'm sure many of you will know the chorus to this as well um, but for, for me and for my family and for those of those of us in test valley it's it's special not just because it, the words come from the Test Valley, but because of Sarah's setting of it. So, this is called Home at Home. Now, and 
many a horse gone to of all the lads and horses in those old fields I knew there's Dick the Dyer at Quinchy and Prince beside the guns on the red road to them just the same. I see them and I know them and name them each by name. Going down to shining waters when all the west's aglow. The lads all sitting sideways and singing sunlight on their faces home lad home to the quiet happy places oh there's rest for horse and man when the hardest fight is won and they all go home together at the setting off with yet another song from Hampshire <laughs> except this is actually was very popular all over the English speaking world so parts of Ireland uh, England the States and so on um, throughout the 19th century and into the well into the 20th century um, it's one of those unusual songs in which it's passed on by word of mouth but no one's ever found a sort of archetype for it in a manuscript or in, or in an early manuscript or in a uh, broadside so Ultimately, it just sprang out of the ether. Um, I'm going to sing you another uh, another um, Whitchurch version, uh, again collected from Henry Lee and from his daughter in 1907 at Two Weir Cottages one quarter of a mile from where I live. Um, it's Henry Lee's version and his daughter's version of If I Was a Blackbird, a very uh, popular and common song. But what, uh, as well as it being uh, well known in folk circles, uh, the great thing about this song is uh, it, it became, it was given a certain amount of commercial success. So it was first, uh, it was recorded in the 1930s from an Ir uh, by an Irish singer called um, Delia Murphy. And her version on the gramophone uh, spread um, both, both throughout Ireland and also to the Irish, Irish diaspora in the States. And then probably came back from there, back to Ireland as well. And then in the 1950s, and I'm sure some of you at home might remember this, it was in the UK top 10 being sung by professional siffler Ronnie Renaud. Siffler is a professional whistler. So he sang this song and made some blackbird noises at the same time, I think. Um, and it was very popular and Ronnie Ronald only died two or three years ago but so his version of this is known by a whole generation of people but um, I really do advise you not to whistle along okay to this 
<laughs> the only whistling that is, that's allowed is like hearing aids overloading. <laughs> Apart from that, um, just do join in with the chorus. Uh, Whitchurch's version of Virus the Blackbird, it's now to the Whitchurch anthem. So here in Devon, please do join in with us. We'll let you sing along. Thank you very much for having me. It's lovely to be back with the Wren Trust. Thank you to Rebecca and thank you to Jim for their beautiful music as well and everyone here who's put this together. So thank you. That's a cue for you to clap. Oh. I am a poor girl, but my fortune is bad. Six months have I courted a young sailor lad, and truly I loved him by night and by day. And now in his transport he's so far away. If I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, I'd follow the vessel my true love sails in. And on the top rigging, there I'd build my nest and lay my head all night on his lily white breast. My love's tall and handsome in every degree. His parents despise him because he loves me, but let them despise him or say what they will. For there's breath in my body, I'll love my love still. If I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, I'd follow the vessel my true love sails in. And on the top rigging, there I'd build my nest and lay my head all night on his lily white breast. He promised he'd meet me at Polly Brown Fair with a bunch of blue ribbons to tie in my hair. And if he should meet me, I'd crown him with joy and kiss those fond lips of my young sailor boy. If I was a blackbird, could whistle and sing, I'd follow the vessel my true love sails in. And on the top rigging, there I'd build my nest and lay my head all night on his lily white breast. a writer could handle the pen just one private letter to him I would send I'd write and I'd tell him of my sad grief and woe and far of the ocean with him I would go if I was a blackbird could whistle and sing I'd follow the vessel my true love sails in And on the top rigging there I'd build my nest And lay my head all night on his lily white breast If I was a blackbird could whistle and sing I'd follow 